Hey everyone, this is me, the Undead Viking. I'm here to talk to you about, well, just something that it came up in actually a, uh, I was playing a game with a few of my friends and then I don't know if I happened to like stumble across a video or whatever. I, I, I don't know, but it, it's been stuck in my head for a little while. Uh, so I've played thousands of board games at this point in my life. And uh, I often say, um, I kind of, I guess, and not to be, I don't know, I know this might come across as a little, a little arrogant or whatever, um, but it's one of those things where it's like, I feel like if you've done a lot of something, um, your opinion on that something is, is it can be completely wrong. Don't get me wrong. Uh, as far as that goes, you, you could be completely and totally, uh, inaccurate, but I do think that you have uh, more of a base uh, for your um, your ability to come to a conclusion, if you will. So I'm in a situation where, with the number of board games I've played, um, with the amount of hours I spent at a table playing board games, and, and for that matter, being at a, a table playing any sort of tabletop game, be it role-playing games, miniature games, board games. I mean, I've done all of those things, and they've been part of my life for decades. Um, I, I, I guess I feel like my opinion is a bit of an informed one, but it doesn't mean you're right. And you can disagree with it. Uh, that being said, there are very few games that I, if I ever, when I did videos and did reviews on a more regular basis, instead of like just the few I do a year now, um, if I found a game that like if I ever did, did like an actual rating like I never did ratings uh, I never said I just said the game was good or in rare cases uh, when I played a game that I didn't like that I wanted to take the time to make a video um, I would say it was bad so um, but for myself and not for the people that watch my videos I do ratings I do consider I I used to keep up to date with my ratings on BGG a long long time ago um, recently, I've been trying to actually update my uh, my onboard game geek update my uh, uh, collection. Uh, and if you go and you find me on, not that I'm asking you to go creep on me or anything, but if you go find under by Camp Board Game Geek, you'll see that there are way more games in the previously owned than the actually owned. Um, you know, so if you want to have a giggle about that, you can go do that. But um, one of the things about being a board gamer is that there's all these different types of board games you play. And uh, one of the genres that um, I've only ever really dipped my toes in, I've never actually played too much of, um, are war games. Uh, there are some solitaire war games that I've played um, that I've enjoyed. Uh, uh, B-17 Flying Fortress, uh, most of those solo sub games I've played, I've enjoyed those. Um, why do I, and, and I think that's one of those things where I enjoy them because, uh, I found myself prepping for it, getting excited to do it, and then just letting the story kind of tell itself, if you will. I played a few coin games. Um, I'm thinking about getting that, uh, Guest of Robin Hood game, um, more because I think I'm going to be able to convince uh my son to play that with me um maybe in a year or so uh and i think that uh he would really like it um i haven't played it yet so i gotta need to get, pick that up that's a coin game it's like supposed to be like the intro level uh to coin games and i i think that would be good now <laughs> the funny thing is is that i don't see myself actually taking that and actually expanding into deeper coin games i i've played a few of them i've enjoyed them but i've loved the fact that somebody else was there that knew how to play and was able to teach it to me and then i was able they were able to dumb it down for me enough that i was able to grasp them so anyway i'm getting way off topic here the reason i was going to talk about war games is i was going to bring up chad jensen um chad jensen uh has designed for me um three of the best games that i've ever played and if i have tens these are in the tens um he's also designed games that uh, weren't great uh in my opinion but regardless um if you know me or if you watch my videos you know i've always said 
you know, Dominant Species is, is a fantastic game. I, I, I love playing that game. Recently, there was a board game meetup and I got there like a half hour late and they had started up a game of Dominant Species. And even though I did not have the requisite amount of time it was going to take for them to play that game, I was very disappointed that I wasn't able to play it because that isn't a game that um, that is that is small, that is short, and you need people that are going to be dedicated to that time to get your enjoyment out of it. And I was very, very disappointed um, that I was unable uh, to 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 get there for that. Um, I would have like canceled other plans to be able to sit there and play. Uh, and then um, the Diamond Species um, Marine version, also very good. Uh, and sadly, um, you know, came out after Chad Jensen's far too uh, untimely uh, passing, um, which sucked. Uh, but, uh, and I'm not here to bring things down, but, and also Urban Sprawl. Now, Urban Sprawl is a game that I think that um, I and very few people actually really, really enjoyed. It came out and a lot of people um, really took it to task, if you will. Uh, and, and one of the things that people uh, did not like about it was the propensity of it creating um, analysis paralysis, which if you watch the title of this video is the whole reason why I'm here to talk about it. Um, I can remember people saying, this game's really good, but we need to have a timer for people's turns. And I remember I said, well, that's stupid. I mean, we don't need a timer, you know, for, for these things. And I've, as much as I've enjoyed Urban Sprawl, I've managed to get it to the table hmm, maybe 10 times since that game came out. And I think that game came out, I mean, I, I could look it up right now on my computer, but I'm not gonna, um, I'm gonna guess it's at least, I'm gonna guess it's somewhere between eight to 10 years old at this point. Um, and that's just a random stab. But I mean, for a game that I consider to be as good as it is, as like a 10 for me, um, the fact that I don't get to play it that often, you know, is kind of, uh, yeah, I'm alone, I guess, in my opinion of that game. Um, and I'm not here to review that game again. I think I did a video review of it a million years ago. You can go check that out if you will. Um, and you maybe you've played it and whatever. And if you want to leave your comments below and, and, and tell me what you think of it, go ahead. I'll respond to it. But I'm here to defend analysis paralysis. And this is actually going to be a very, very quick explanation is why I don't have a problem. And I've said this before. I mean, back when I was like, people had me on podcasts and people um, uh, like asking questions at, at conventions or whatever, and we would discuss analysis paralysis, this why I would say I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with the fact that people take a long time on their turn. And ultimately what it is for me is that when I'm playing a game, I want to be able to make, you know, and it, it's self-serving a little bit for myself, is the fact that I want to be able to take all the time I need to feel like I'm making the right decision to give me the best chance of winning. Now, I know this mentality of like, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, just try to have fun. Well, the problem is, is that like I don't have fun unless I'm competitive in the game. If if like I'm I'm losing and I'm not doing well, I tend to grouse and lose interest in what I am, what what's going on. Um, one of the reasons why there's a lot of games I really don't like is that like you feel like you're winning and then you find out at the end that you you, you were losing the entire time. I don't like that. I don't like that feeling of having the rug pulled out from underneath you. Um, it's it's and that's another topic. I'm I'm not going to dive too too far into that. Um, I remember just as a first, and I mean this is a bit of self aggr aggrandization here. Um, they I was recently playing a game of Space Base uh, with a few of my friends at that same board game meetup, and I I enjoy that game. I enjoy Space Base a lot, and I remember just having horrible. Horrible luck. And I think I told this story already, and I apologize for that if you watch these videos a lot. Um, but he he uh there there was this wonderful gentleman, uh, and his name eludes me uh for the moment, but but I I just thoroughly enjoy playing games with him because he's very droll and very sarcastic, and just his huge sense of humor just hits on every single button for me. Um, but he he said 
um as i was sitting there grousing about my bad luck about the bad dice rolls and whatever and it's like ah yes uh lance will lance will gripe and grouch and complain and, and as he grinds his way to yet another victory and and sure enough at the end of space the whole thing is space space that's exactly what happened i i i, I bemoaned my bad luck the entire time and then i ended up winning the game so um it was fun but regardless analysis paralysis i think the people should be have should have as much time as they need within reason to, you know, within reason, as much time as they need to determine what they need to do on their turn. And this kind of goes to my whole process of like the um the equivalency at the table should be for for be as as even as possible for everybody that's involved. Um and this is kind of difficult in some situations. Like if you sit down to play War of the Ring with somebody who's played the game a hundred times, I mean, more often than not, that person's going to just, you know, you know, beat the stuffing out of you. I mean, there's some random elements and things like that. You can get lucky. But, you know, people that understand the strategies, understand what they need to do to win, they're more often than not, they're going to defeat the people that aren't. Now, there are extremes uh, to trying to get equivalency, right? I mean, I there's a pretty famous person on Board Game Geek. I'm not going to mention uh, their, their their posting name, um, but uh, and I you know I'm pretty sure this person wouldn't care uh, if 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 I if I mentioned them my name, but uh, it's not mine to say. Uh, but the there's a pretty famous person who who will say that in games like that you should seek to have everybody on the same playing field as much as possible, including giving people hints and tips on their turn, even if they're not asked for, so they can they can achieve the best possible results. So the group as a whole has the most competitive field as possible. Um, the idea is is that beating down on somebody who doesn't know what they're doing doesn't give the person that's actually winning a real win. And, and the person that, that doesn't know what they're doing, they're not going to want to play that game again because of the fact that, you know, that their, their experience with the game is very negative. And, I, and, and to, a, to a certain degree, I agree with that. I mean, one of the things that this person says a lot is that if there's any sort of um, hidden scoring that goes on in the game, um, then people should be allowed to have a notepad out and then keep track of other people's scores as they go. And the reason behind that is, is that it's quite possible somebody at the table might have a better form of eidetic memory that allows them to mentally keep track of everybody else's scores and they know exactly where they are. And that should like even things out, you know, and, and so there's extremes like that's kind of weird, you know, in my opinion, but I also get it right. It's on the same page as having the as, as even as possible. So my my point here with analysis paralysis is that some people might be able to see the path of the victory that they want to achieve in, on a given turn. They they know that I, I can do X, Y, and Z, and then that will give me, you know, 17 points, and that's the best possible option for me. Whereas for other people, seeing that X, Y, and Z for 17 points isn't as evident for them. And they need to take some time to figure that out and get to that point. And it is made worse for that person if they are trying to achieve that. Now, there might be people that are like, I don't care if I'm going to lose. Doesn't doesn't matter to me. Let me just play. And if I don't, if I if if I do ABC for seven points instead of XYZ for 17, I'm fine with that. And we can move on because they don't want to, for a lot of reasons. One, they don't like taking a lot of time. Two, it causes them anxiety over the fact that they know the other people are waiting on them. Um, you know, lots of different possibilities. And 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 that's fine. And that and that's okay. Um, then go at it. But if a person is like, I want to figure out exactly what I should do, and I want to do as good as possible and 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 figure this out and do exactly what I need to do, then I think that it should be allowed, right? I think that it should, that person should be given, you know, three, four, five minutes to figure out their turn and take their turn and do it. And the thing is, is that like in some situations, you will see a table of people playing at like a convention and you will see three or four people, you know, men and women just sitting there playing a game 
And you can tell one person's taking their turn and the other ones are sitting in quiet silence, letting, letting them decide. Maybe they're having a, 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 a conversation amongst each other uh, while they wait for that person to complete it. And that's fine. And here's the deal. I don't care if if my buddy is 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 sitting over there and they're 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 trying to mentally figure out their turn and it is a game with three four people, then I can have that conversation with other people. And the whole point of the game, I mean, the game's the point, right? But the community of the game is for me as equally as important. Um, so being able to sit down and have like some time, some uninterrupted time. Where we can all talk and discuss and and figure out exactly what's going on and determine things amongst each other and, and talk about life talk about our families talk about our jobs talk about the world you know that's part of it as well and um yeah i mean it's just and that's it right that's my stance and i do think also that like if somebody's taking three minutes four minutes five minutes on their turn to figure out what they want to do um when I see somebody being kind of a jerk, like, hey, come on, move on, let's go, let's take your turn. It's like, one, I think it's a little like rude, right? And I understand people are saying, well, the person taking a long time is rude. But two, you know, it's just like, also, usually that person is like trying to egg that person to make their decisions so, because they see the thing they want to do and they want to make sure that that option is still available to them and they feel like if they can rush that person, then maybe they won't see that that spot or that opportunity or that combination or whatever. And I mean, I guess it comes down to is just like, um, for me, uh, you know, being nice, right? You're, you're, you're playing a game, you know, you're not, you're not like diffusing a bomb with only one minute to go. Right. Uh, you, 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 you can take the time you, you can relax. I mean, I'll say this. If somebody's taking five minutes to make a decision about what they're going to do on Uno, then fine. Go for it. You know, have at it. Uh, you know, just you, you throw the person out of the game and move on with your lives. But if if it's if you like, you know, you're you're sitting down to play, you know, anything that's even like, you know, like a, has a little bit of grit to it. Um, give some people some space, give some people some time and and like, and in my opinion, like, it's like, hey, do you, do you need some help with your turn? I mean, and, and offer kindly. It's like, oh, hey, don't, you know, and you can do it in such a way that will seem um, not pushy, I guess. And I think that that's a good point too. Just the golden rule of treat, pe treat people the way you want to be treated kind of falls into play here. A little bit. And I know there's a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for here? I know there's 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 a there's a lot of vagary here, and there's a lot of different opportunities and a lot of different situations that have different applications for different uh, problems. And I'm sure somebody out there who watches this will like say, "Wait a minute, no, I had a situation like this, and this person was a complete jerk about taking so long on their turn." And that's like, yeah, exceptions are going to exist, but for the most part, just let some people breathe, let the room breathe, just relax, and and. And and the game will the game will be over before you know it, and 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 you want everybody there to have feel like they had a good time, and also feel like they had a good time with you. So there it is. Um, thank you for watching this. Uh, you might be watching this on my Undead Viking videos channel. You might be watching this on my Gray Fox Games channel. I do ask, and I, I, I rarely ask these things, but if you are happen to watch on one of those channels and you're not watching it on the other channel, um, please go and subscribe, hit the bell, do the things to notify or whatever. Um, leave some comments, leave some likes, do the thing. Um, just basically because, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to do one of these every week. I'm going to try to hold on to that, that, that schedule as long as possible. Um, when I, when I see people actually responding and interacting with me, that kind of makes me happy, <laughs> if you will. And it feeds my little, my little ego monster that's inside of me. Um, and then it, it propels me forward to like, want to do that. If you don't want to feed that little ego monster, I get it. I understand. But, um, I, I I enjoy doing this stuff and 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 I I usually will sit around and think about what I want to talk about and uh and then these ideas come to me. And I'm like I said, I'm trying to do these once a week. And if you have a suggestion of something that you want to know my opinion on, 
um, whether it is just out of board game public publishing or being a reviewer or any of something about the board game hobby or something outside of the board game hobby, um, you know, leave those comments below. And uh, and then if it's something I think that I could entertain you with a short little video like this, uh, I'll make it. All right. So uh, all that being said, have a good one. Take care. And we'll talk soon.